Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 36 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we are using the SunFounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. SunFounder, putting the tech back in toptechboy.com. But guys, most of you probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop over there and pick up this kit because believe me, your life and my life are going to be easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to show you is my solution for the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 35. Now, where we have been going in this class in the last few lessons is try to move from projects that are anchored down to the desktop by things like the keyboard and the uh, monitor and the power connections and all those different things and create systems that are not tied down to the desktop but are free to roam mobile devices that we could actually deploy in real applications so in order to do that we have to do things like have a way to give input without a keyboard and so how are we doing that let's switch over to this little view here and then i think i can uh, get out of your way to allow you to see this a little better and so you can see sort of what we're doing is we're moving in this direction where we have a keypad we have a keypad let me come to the over overhead view okay that you can see the whole thing you can see that we have the keypad for user input we have the lcd display to send uh, results or output to the user and then what we've been doing is we've been working towards building an alarm system and that alarm system the purpose of it is is to have something that we could actually put somewhere and use and so in the last few lessons what we did was we got the lcd working we got the keypad working and then we had the basic structure the basic uh, 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 program flow for an alarm system but we actually didn't have an alarm sensor and we didn't have an alarm sound and so your your homework was to take that skeleton of a program and to actually put together sort of a first try of having an actual alarm system now i think for the homework assignment i told you to put an audible alarm but as i started doing the solution i don't want this lesson to be too long and so what we're going to do is we're going to get the pir sensor working and then next week i will add the audible alarm First of all, did anybody do the homework? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend. If you were not successful, leave a comment. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Or the third option is I never even entered the arena. And I'm afraid more and more of you guys are falling into that category of not even trying the homework. But what I do know is I do know that a lot of you guys are taking this and the Fusion 360 lessons, and there's one lesson a week in each one of those series, and so it's a little bit hard to keep up. So I understand that. But it is an encouragement to me if I see you guys actually doing your homework, posting it on YouTube. You know the routine. Okay, so let's talk about what we are going to do today. We are going to we're going to take this and we're going to use the libraries that we have for the keypad and the libraries that we have for the LCD and then to our program flow we are going to add the PIR sensor. All right. Now, I'm going to kind of go through this first part pretty fast because this is very similar to stuff I showed last week and the week before. If I'm going too fast and losing you back up a few lessons if something doesn't make sense because all of this stuff I explained back then. But I'm going to go very, very briefly 
over how I have this stuff hooked up because we might have some drive-by shooters that are not taking the class but just are sort of jumping into this lesson because they want to make an alarm. Okay, on the keypad, what I want you to see is there are eight leads coming off the keypad. And the way these are hooked up, this is row zero, row one, row two, row three, column zero, column one, column two, column three, just straight across the board. All right, how do we hook those up? Conveniently, there are eight. And then what we are doing is on the physical pins on the Raspberry Pi, we are starting with row zero, the leftmost lead on the keypad. We're going to pin 11, the next one to uh, physical pin 13, the next one to physical pin 15, and then we jump down to physical pin 29, 31, 33, 35, and 37. So as we go across left to right on the keypad, we just go down those eight GPIO pins on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi, and it's the odd number pins. Those are the inside pins on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, that should make sense. That will get that will get your else that will get your uh, keypad hooked up. Now, how do we hook up the uh, how do we hook up the LCD? That is very simple because if you turn the LC, if you turn the LCD upside down and look at it like this, you can see that this pin is ground. Well, ground goes to ground. Let's see if I can come back. Uh, let's see if I can come back over here like this. So this left pin is ground and ground goes to ground. You can use a convenient ground. It looks like that I use this pin 14 for ground. And then the next pin over is labeled VCC. The VCC needs to be five volts. Okay, the VCC needs to be five volts. And so I used up here pin four. Okay, up there pin four. And then the SDA is physical pin three. You can see it in purple there. It is labeled. And then SCL is pin five. And so these four pins here that are clearly labeled very clearly go over to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Now, the one thing, again, you have to remember is the LCD does, in fact, need the LCD does need five volts. Okay, now we need to hook up the PIR sensor. Okay, the PIR sensor. And this is the way it works. Point, you have it upside down. Okay, do you see how I have this upside down? And then the pins are pointing towards me. When you have it upside down with the pins pointing towards you, the leftmost pin is VCC, and that needs to go to five volts. And so I put that up to pin two to get my five volts. And then the center pin, the center pin is uh, what I have in orange here. That is the signal pin. And so that needs to go to the first convenient GPIO pin, which you can see here is pin 12. So I connected that center pin to pin 12. And then the rightmost pin is ground. And that ground, I believe I brought down to, it looks like I brought that down to the ground here on 14. Okay, that is wired up. If I went too fast for you, go back and watch the last few lessons. But I didn't want to bore the people that have already been taking this class. And so I kind of went kind of quickly there. All right. The one other thing that I need to tell you, the one other thing that I need to tell you is, is that if you haven't been taking the class, there's two libraries that you need that are not standard libraries. The good news is you can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you need to use this happy little search icon here and search on something like library for I2C connection of the Raspberry Pi. You'll come to this page. You can snag this code and then you need to save it in your main Python folder. That's the folder that has your main program. Whatever program you're running, whatever Python program we develop for the alarm, that same folder needs to have a file called all uppercase lcd1602.py, the .py lowercase. This is going to be your library. Similarly, we need a library, and we developed this in an earlier class, a library for reading the 16-pin button, uh, button pad, uh, the 16-pad uh, uh, keypad. And we come here, you can search on library for reading a 16-button keypad. You come down here, you copy the code, and this one you need to store in a file, again, in your Python folder called all uppercase kplib, 
kplib.py. When you have those two stored in your folder, you have the libraries that you need. Okay, enough of this talking. And what we need to do is we need to start coding now. So we're going to start. We're going to start building the basic framework. And this is kind of how our program flow is going to go. We're going to have three modes. We're going to have three modes that the alarm can be in. Okay. We, it's, it, it can be in the armed state. It can be in the disarmed state. And it can be in the change password state. So there's going to be those sort of three branches that the program is going to have. Now, if we're sitting there armed, it's going to be sitting there reading the PIR sensor. So at the same time, we have to be listening for input from the keypad. So the keypad has to operate in the background. How do we make the keypad operate in the background? We make the keypad operate in the background using a thread. Okay, so we're going to create a thread that is going to run that, uh, that keypad library, and it's going to be constantly looking for input from the user. And so while that's working in the main background, then uh, it, while that's working in the background, then the main program is is just going to be sitting and cycling through and deciding whether it is in the arm, the disarm, or the change password. Okay, does that make sense? Let's jump in and start coding. And again, this first part of the code we kind of did last week. And so this will be a little bit of a review for you. But let's just jump in and let's start coding. Okay, so the first thing is we are going to need to import our library. So ooh, let's get here in the right spot. We are going to import our libraries. Do you ever lose your cursor? There it is. Okay, so we're going to import rp little i gpio dot or rpi dot dot gpio as gpio. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do a gpio dot set mode on gpio dot board. Now, why am I using board? I am using board as the numbering scheme because why? Because we have all these things hooked up directly to the Raspberry Pi, and it's easier to keep track of pin numbers when you're connecting up this way with just the physical pins, just the board numbering scheme. And hopefully that makes sense. When we use that uh, that 40 pin connector and that breakout board, the breakout board is labeled in BCM and we use BCM, but not in this case, okay? Now we also need to set up our PIR sensor. So our PIR pin, what did we hooked that up to? We said we hooked that up to physical pin 12, which is a GPIO pin. We're going to be reading from that pin, so we're going to do a GPIO dot set up. And what are we going to set up? We're going to set up PIR, PIR pin, which we just defined, and we are going to set that up as GPIO dot in because it is an input. All right, now we need to import the library LCD. 1602, that's the library you just stored in your main Python folder program, your P Python program folder. Okay, you just stored that in there. But notice that you stored it as lcd1602.py, but when you import it, you just import it as lcd1602. Similarly, we're going to import our keypad library, so that's kplib again, just like that. Now we are going to from time import sleep because we're going to need to do delays. Now, remember, we are going to need the keypad operating in the background. How do you make something operate in the background? What's the magic word? The magic word is threading. So we're going to import the threading library. Now we're going to set up my, my keypad by setting up, by creating a keypad object. My keypad object is my keypad like that. And that's going to be equal to KL or KPLIB, that's the library, dot keypad, that's the class. And now I've got to pass it what our return character is. So R-E-T-C-H-A-R, you've got to do it just like that. You've got to use this variable name, retchar for return character is the uppercase D. 
and then we close that out. And then what is that nonsense about? That is that like if you're going to give input to this thing and you want to put in the number 4567, you put 4567, you have to have an enter key. And we're defining that enter key as D. You can define it as something else, but I like D because it's kind of back here in the lower uh, in the lower area there. So I kind of like doing it like that. Okay, so now let's uh, let's come over here. Let me see. This is. I think that'll that'll help out a little bit there. I think maybe my mic was showing a little bit low. So hopefully this is a little bit clearer audio now. So now we have defined our uh, we have defined our return key. Now we've got to set up the LCD, and so we're going to do the LCD sixteen o two and then dot init and we've got to give it the i2c address which was 0x27 if you've not taken the earlier uh, video in this series go back and look at the first video i did on the lcd and it will explain how to set up i2c and what this address means but most of you guys have already done that so we just need to do that and then a comma one all right and now we are going to be reading a string i ah, you didn't see that. So let me go back. I'm not sure you missed a few lines of code here, but yeah, we did that. You saw that we set it to D and now we do LCD 1602 init. And then the I2C address is zero X 27 and then a comma one. Okay. And now we're going to be reading from that keypad. We're going to be reading a string, but we need to go ahead and initialize that string as my string. And that's going to be equal to uh, single quote, single quote. Okay, so we're just setting it to a blank. Single quote, single quote. My string is empty to start with. We've got to give it an initial password. So PWD is going to just be one, two, three, four, like that. Never fear, we can change the password once we run the program. All right, so that is the password. Now, we need to define the function that is going to be sitting there reading the keypad. So I'm going to define read KP like that, open, close, colon. And this is really pretty darn simple. This thing is really pretty darn si simple. Now I'm going to be reading my string in this function. But as it reads, as it constantly reads my string, when there's input, I need to let the whole program know what my string is. And so I need to make global my string. And that way, whenever there's a new string, the whole program is going to know about it. So I make it a global variable, if that makes sense. Now, what I had done earlier, we'd done something like this while true, and I'll just do it this way, and then we'll come back and I'll show you a better way to do it while while true. And let's see, yeah, well, true, like that. And then what are we going to do? We're going to say CM, or we're going to say, uh, we're going to read my string. My string is equal to my keypad, or my pad, I think I called it. Yeah, I called it my pad up there, my pad. Okay. And then dot read, key, read key pad and then I've got to open and close okay so my string is going to read from my keypad that is my keypad object that I created and then it is going to be using the method in that library called read keypad and then when you hit a number in D then it returns you a value for my string okay does that look good and then after that what we need to do is we just need to sleep for about 0.5 just so that we give it time before we enter the next uh, the next thing you don't want to run some of these things too quickly okay what is the problem with this the problem with this is remember we want to get away from the keyboard the problem is there's no way to kill the program from the keypad there is no way to kill the program from the keypad. And so we need a way to kill the program for, from the keypad. And what I'm going to say is, is that if you enter an asterisk, that will kill the program. So I need to put a hook here. If it sees my string is an asterisk, 
then what does it want to do? It kills the program. And so practically, what does that mean? That means if we're sitting here reading the keypad, reading the keypad, reading the keypad, I don't want to really do that forever. I only want to do it while what? While my string is not equal to the asterisk. Okay, now if you put an asterisk enter, it's going to stop reading the keypad. So we're going to kill this part of the program. Now down below in the main program, I'm going to have to put a hook there too as well so that I kill the thread and I kill the program. But here we have killed the program. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, I think that is pretty good. Now what we're going to need to do is we are going, ooh, wild, wild. That would be terrible, wild. Okay, let me just kind of read over this a little bit. Now we are going to come back all the way over here and we will begin to set some other things up. So first of all, I need to create a thread. I'm going to call it the read thread, the read thread. And that is going to be equal to what? The library threading dot the method thread thread. And then what do I do? I got to tell it what function to target. The target is going to be read KP, that read the keypad like that. And now I got to pass it the arguments. So comma, the arguments. But if we look up here, there are no arguments, but yet I still have to have that dangling comma. And then I close that parenthesis out. So then that should be pretty good. Now for this to run in the background, I need to make it a daemon true. So read thread is uh, read thread dot daemon, read thread dot daemon, D-A-E-M-O-N equal true. All right. And now I need to start the thread. So read, read thread dot start and then open close like that. So now that's going to fire up that. And when we get to this point, it is sitting there just looking for input to come from the keypad into my string. And when it gets input, then the whole program down here is going to know what the new my string is. Okay. Now what we need to do now is we need to get our main wheel going. We need to get our main loop going in the program. Now earlier, what we were saying is while true, but now we got to have a way to kill it from the keyboard. So what do we say while my string, while my string is not equal to the asterisk. So the asterisk will kill both parts of the program, right? Put the colon come here. Now we got to start writing the main part of our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to now grab the last my string and we're going to say CMD is equal to my string. Now, why do I grab and put my string into CMD here so that as I go through the loop, CMD will not change even if my string changes. So you wouldn't want to start this main loop with one my string and then end it with another. So I snag my string into command so I can go through the three if statements without fear of the variable changing in the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. Think about it a little bit and I think it will. So CMD is equal to my string. Now I'm going to set up the three three parts of the program. So if CMD equal equal the character A and then concatenated with the password because I don't want to arm or disarm this thing if I don't know the password. I don't want to let some Yahoo, some bozo off the street come in and hit A and D arm it. They have to hit A and the password and then D for enter. And if they do that, then they can earn themselves a way into this little thing here. And so right now I'm just going to do it real simple. I'm just going to say LCD 1602.write. And then what am I going to write? I'm going to write to z uh, column zero, row zero, and then I'm going to write 
armed, A-R-M-E-D. That's one, two, three, four, five. And then let's put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that will fill up the row. I like to put these blank spots because then if I wrote something else and then come back and write again, it will erase all the characters of whatever I wrote before. So I like to kind of fill that up like that little pro tip. So there we're just going to say, okay, it is armed. And I'm going to start by just building the skeleton, make sure the skeleton works. Then I will come in and start putting the gravy in. Okay, so let's start with the skeleton and we will end with the gravy. And now we'll say if CMD is equal, equal to the character B, okay, concatenated with PWD, then what we are going to say is LCD 1602.write like that. And then what are we going to write? Column zero, row zero, comma, unarmed, like that. Come out here to erase whatever nonsense was already there. Okay, and then close our parenthesis. Now the last one is going to be if, if CMD equal equal the character C, the character C concatenated with the password, then what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to change the password. So we're going to prompt the user for the new password, LCD 1602.write, and then we're going to put it in zero, comma, zero, comma, and then we're going to put password like that, question mark, and then come on out like this to erase any nonsense that is there and then close the parentheses. That is looking good. And now what we'll want to do is let's go ahead and let's, uh, I'm going to erase the second line to LCD 1602.write. And this time we are going to start at column zero, row one. And then this time we are just going to erase anything that might be there when we get here. Okay. Now we have written the password. Now we're asking for the password. What do we need to do? We need to wait for the password. So while my string equal equal C concatenated with PWD. So in order to get to this program, oh man, that is that is some crazy business there. Wow, that's like Wiley Coyote. Okay, while my string is equal to C, the only way that we could get here would be if, if command was C plus uh, password. All right, but now what we're going to look at is not command, but we're going to be looking for my string to not be that, which means my string needs to change. It needs to be something different. And that something different will become the password. Now, why do we put my string here instead of command? If we put command, it would loop forever because the only place command can change is all the way back up here. But we get down here by command equaling C plus password. And then we are going to hang here as long as my string also stays at that. And so we're just going to stay, we're going to hang here. But then when there is a new my string, that means the person has entered the password. And now we are going to read that in as what? As the password. So now what we're going to say is, we know when we get here, password is uh, that when we get here, we know my string has changed. So now PWD is equal to that new uh, string. I hope that makes sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. All right. So now what we are going to do is we are going to do a, uh, we are going to do an LCD 1602 dot write, and we are going to write on zero comma zero comma and we're going to write pwd and then we're going to add concatenate to pwd some uh some spaces that will erase anything that might have been there i think that looks good we'll close that and now we are going to sleep for two for two seconds 
so that you'll have a chance to see the password, but then do we want to just sit there and leave that password on the screen? I think not. So we're going to do LCD 1602 dot write. And then what are we going to write? Zero comma zero com, uh, comma and then like that so that we are going to cover up that password so that you can look at it, make sure it's what you thought it was, and then it'll go away. Okay, and so we overwrite it, and then just to be good, let's, uh, I'm also just to be thorough, I'm going to do an LCD, LCD 1602 dot clear like that, and then the open close. Uh, all right, now, after we have done all of that, after we've gone through, so this is one loop through, and then it will either kind of like jump into this branch, or jump into this branch, or jump into this branch. Well, after we've done all that, let's sleep for one second, okay, and then, uh, no, actually what we're going to need to do is at this point we have gone all the way through. And so now what happens if we hit the start? Now we want to clean up the program. So we're going to come down here and this is kind of like when you put the asterisk in the enter, now you're going to exit the program cleanly. So you're going to say sleep one just to give it a chance to finish anything that might be going on. We're going to do a GPIO dot clean up clean up like that and then we're going to do an LCD 1602 clear to clear the LCD and then we're going to do a print GPIO good GPIO good to go just to let us know that we have release those GPIO pins. Okay, so that is the basic skeleton of the program. Let's see if that works before we go in and start doing the schnazzy stuff just to make sure that we have a, core, a functioning core program. So let's run this thing. Guys, just looking this over, it really looks good to me. Let's just try it again. Maybe I wasn't deliberate enough in my keystrokes. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to say A, one, two, three, four and D boom okay you didn't see it because I didn't have the view there but let's come back over here and you can see that I am in fact armed and so I think that I just got a little bit quick with the fingers and I wasn't careful enough so let's try the next one B one two three four and D unarmed boom now let's see if we can pass the change the password C one two three four okay it's asking me for a password what password one two one two enter okay it's got the new password now let's see if we can arm it a one two one two and that didn't take so let's try it again let's see okay yeah, I didn't hit the D. I wasn't deliberate in hitting the D. Okay, so now it's aren't. Boom. Okay, so we have the core functionality of the program working. What do we need to do? We need to go in and we need to put the PIR sensor in now. Okay, so the hard, I think the hardest work is done now. So let's come back over here. And what do we really need to work on? We need to work on this armed part of the program. We need to work on the armed part of the program. So what do we need to do here? Well, we write that it's armed. Now we need to actually, yeah, wrong position of the cursor. So what we've done here is we've written that it's armed. Now we actually need to arm it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a move val. Is anything moving? And I'm going to do that by doing a GPIO dot input. And what am I going to look at? I'm going to look at PIR PIN like that. I'm going to look at PIR dot PIN just like that. Now it's going to be a one if something is in the field of view moving and it's going to be a zero if it's not. Well, if if move val is equal equal one, that means we have an intruder. And so what we are going to do is we are going to do an LCD 1602. And then what are we going to write? We are going to write a column zero, row one. That's the next row uh, down. I'm going to write intruder alert 
like that intruder alert. Okay. And then we would do other interesting countermeasures here. But for right now, we're just trying to get the program working. And now I can say if move val equal equal zero, then what we are going to say is we are going to do an LCD 1602 dot. I didn't do the dot right up there, did I? Dot right. Doesn't count as a mistake if you find it before you run the program, right? Uh, like that. And then dot right. And then again, column zero, row one. And then we're going to put all clear like that. And then we'll put it out there to erase any of the other things that might be on there. And then we're going to close that out. Okay. And so that's what's going to happen. And then we would go on to the next part of, we would go on to the next part of the program. And then let's see if there's any other things that I need to do. I probably here need to clear the second row. And so here, what I would do is while I'm, you know, if I was in the all clear or in the intruder alert, and then I want to unarm, I need to probably get that off the screen. So I'm going to do an LCD. D1602, lined up properly, LCD1602 dot right, like that. And then I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go zero, row one, and then I'm just going to clear off whatever I wrote before on there, just so that we don't end up with extraneous old messages in different places. And then let's see if I need to do this anywhere else. Edit, copy. When I got here, I'd already cleared that row. So I think that we are all set here. And so this is looking pretty good. So let's see if we can actually make this thing work. So we're going to come over here to the overhead view. And then I've kind of got the sensor pointing towards me. And so now what I am going to do is I am going to run the program. Hold your breath. Oh, okay. I didn't star out last time. So let's go ahead and see if we can star out. So I'm going to put a star and a D. And you see I've got GPI good to go. Now this time I shouldn't get the error, okay, because I quit the program properly. So we're going to go run. Okay, now I'm going to go A, one, two, three, four. Now it's going to be hard to not alarm it, but I'll try to be very still. Armed. Okay, move Val. Ah, okay, I do have an error there. So let me show you my error. My error in the code, I did move Val very poorly. And so that was down here. I said move val, move val, this one, move val. I had a little bit of typo there. Let's run it again. Let's come back and I'm going to star out star D so that I will release those GPIO pins. And now we will run it. And now I'll show you the overhead view. So let's see if we can arm it. A, one, two, three, four. And now let's go with D. Okay, it saw me initially. All clear. Now when I move my hand away, it sees me. Okay, boom. But now I'm going to be real still. Real still. All clear. All clear. And now if I move, intruder alert. Ha <laughs> ha! Shazam! This is working. Okay, now let's see if we can unarm. So I'm going to say B. One, two, three, four, and you've got to be kind of deliberate in your key punches. You can't just, you know, it's not very forgiving. Now let's see if I can change the password. C, one, two, one, two, enter. Okay, let's try it again. Oh no, I, it's C, one, two, three, four. That's the password we're on. And then D, it wants the password one, two, one, two, and then D. Okay, it's got the password. Now I'll arm it A, one, two, one, two, and D. All clear intruder alert.
boom. Okay, guys, we have ourselves. This is a discrete alarm system that only gives the uh, alarm trigger the the announcement of an intruder here on the LCD screen but now what is the next step we want to do again I didn't want to make this lesson overwhelming and so your next assignment is to come in and on this intruder alert besides having a announcement on the LCD screen I want you to have an audible alarm now this is going to be a top techboy.com contest for bragging rights. You don't get an actual prize, but you get bragging rights for who can come up with the most bodacious alarm system. Now you could imagine that you could put the little beeper on here and you could go beep, 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 beep with the beeper in the kit. Maybe you could buy a huge beeper that would be an ear piercing siren that went off. Or maybe you can also see that you have a sound jack here. And what you could do is maybe hook up a speaker and play a big sound. Or maybe you could do something even with Bluetooth. Maybe you could Bluetooth into your home stereo system and you could put some sort of alarm. But what we want to see is we want to see the most bodacious alarm system and see who can come up with the most over the top crazy alarm system. And then I'll show you my solution next week. Does that sound like fun? I hope it is. I'm actually kind of excited about this. I think this is, is kind of going in a pretty neat direction. This is the third or fourth lesson that we've done on this. But what I want you to see is any portable project that you're going to do is you're going to need some form of output. You're going to need some form of input and you're going to be needing to probably read from some type of sensor. So no matter what you do, you're going to need a program that has this kind of like basic program flow. And so the alarm is a good example to give, but really it would apply to just about any portable system that you would want to do. Guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then uh, share this with other people. Share this with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering projects and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.